Chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Iowa, Ms. Miller Meeks. Dr. Miller Meeks, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and thank you, Administrator uh, Regan, for appearing before us today. Representing Iowa, a lot of the work I do uh, naturally focuses on ensuring uh, biofuels, including ethanol, uh, remain in the national energy mix. With CO2 capture during the ethanol production uh, process, ethanol serves as a tool to reduce emissions associated with liquid fuels for on-road vehicles. With ethanol available as a viable fuel source, one that drives emission reductions, I have concerns about recent actions EPA has taken to prop up electric vehicles at the expense of ethanol and biofuels. This includes EPA's recent vehicle standards proposal and the SET proposal. Instead of focusing on only one solution, EVs, EPA should focus on a level playing field for all types of fuels and vehicles that can reduce emissions. The solutions from my bill, the Next Gen Fuels Act, are a great example of a pathway to reduce emissions and cost with cleaner fuels and vehicles. Administrator Reagan, the set proposal creates an entirely new e-RINS program where electric vehicle manufacturers generate RINS. Under the Clean Air Act, the authority to generate RINS is given to any person that refines, blends, or imports gasoline. Now, I will also say, in quoting you earlier from this hearing, you said, hopefully I'm quoting accurately, you're a strong supporter of E15 and biofuels. And personally, I appreciate the EPA's recent action on E15 for this year and look forward to a permanent solution. However, it seems punitive since Congress specifically designed the RFS program to encourage the use of domestically produced biofuel blends under what statutory authority did EPA use to allow electric vehicle manufacturers to generate ERINs and participate in the RFS program? We don't have. You have no statutory authority? We don't, no, no, no. We don't Thank have you for that. ERINs program. EPA's set proposal also establishes volumes for advanced biofuels and biomass based diesel that are below current blending levels and significantly lower than the expected growth of the biofuels industry. Last year alone, companies announced six billion in investments for 21 projects that would deliver billions of gallons of biofuels as soon as this year. Why did the EPA set volumes at such a low rate? We don't have a final ERINs program. It doesn't exist for the record. Number two, this administration has set the highest RVOs ever in EPA history uh, from 2020, 2021, and 2022. As we look at the set for biodiesel, as we look at the set rule for 2023 and beyond, we have proposed. And let me just be clear: I have engaged mightily with the biodiesel industry since we proposed that rule, and we haven't finalized those numbers yet. So the I, biofuels I think industry has engaged mightily with me as well. I, I think and it's they premature. were disappointed at the volumes. So. And I was also interested, you talked, um, I think it was uh, Representative Fulcher asking you about uh, the energy needed for electric vehicles and you, um, I think you indicated that you think that there is enough energy uh, production sources at this point in time to meet the EPA's emission standards, which would, um, I won't say mandate, uh, would veer us towards 67% of vehicles on the road being uh, electric. Are you aware how many vehicles, passenger vehicles, are on the road today? I think you, your premise is at this day and time, these rules proposed for years modeled out. And so I, I didn't on the record say that you could get a 67% EV penetration rate today with this infrastructure and this environment. That's, you're that's saying a, you're that's a bringing statement. online over the course of the next years enough energy production to meet a 67% change in vehicles to EVs? I say that the rule proposes a range from 53 to 67, and we're taking comments from power plants, from grid operators. I just want to make sure I understand that, that you know, we are currently at 13% renewables with wind and solar, 35% natural gas for energy. The biggest saving to life is in heating our homes and preventing deaths from cold. Uh, and that has uh, been res largely responsible to the Permian Basin. I think the most environmentally injustice thing that we can do, which was pointed out to us in one of our previous hearings, was to, in to have uh, energy production that does not keep up with demand, that forces people 
to lower their standard of living and not provide for them the energy to heat their homes, to put fuel in their gas tanks, and to buy groceries at an affordable level, hurting and, uh, and putting at a disadvantage our most uh, vulnerable. Thank you, and I yield back my time. Gentlelady yields back.